Welcome. During the month of August, we're going to dive into the wisdom writings found in the Hebrew Scriptures, also known as the Old Testament. Now, you might wonder why I'm referring to the Old Testament as the Hebrew Scriptures. Well, calling it the Old Testament carries kind of a message that it's old news, outdated, out of touch. For Christians, though, we understand Jesus through his Jewish faith. And often, very often, Jesus and the Gospel writers quote the writings of the prophets and sages found in the Old Testament. So in order to honor those sacred writings, we started calling the Old Testament the Hebrew Scriptures. They are the foundation of our faith and as relevant today as they were in Jesus' time. So if you hear me talking about the Hebrew Scriptures, I'm referring to the Old Testament. I thought we'd have a look at some of the writings we don't often preach about because they are often very controversial. And last week, we did a quick look at the book of Ecclesiastes, which is a perspective on the meaning of life. Today, we're going to jump into the Song of Solomon, the most risque book in the Bible. So hang on to your hats. As we begin, let's center ourselves. Get comfortable and take a moment to acknowledge that the land upon which you are sitting is holy ground part of God's good creation, which has been nurtured and cared for by Indigenous people as traditional territory. Bondhead United Church is situated on the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Wendat, and Chippewa people. And as I stand on this holy ground, I commit to working toward right relationship with all people. If the call to worship and prayer sound familiar, that's because it is. In this summer series, I'm using the same liturgy because it connects all the themes we will be exploring during the month of August. So please join with me. We are here to worship a remarkable God. The love of God welcomes us. The grace of Christ awaits us. The joy of the Spirit enfolds us. We are welcomed, heard, and comforted by a remarkable God. The love of God emboldens us. The grace of Christ redeems us. The joy of the Spirit uplifts us. And so we come as joyful, thankful recipients of amazing grace. The love of God overflows our hearts. The grace of Christ liberates our spirits. And the joy of the Spirit sings in our minds. Come, let us worship together.
Let's pray. Creating God, you are the source of summer splendor, the beauty and grace of delicate flowers, and the sweet sound of birdsong. Be among us this day as we pray gratitude for all your wonders. As the fields produce their harvest, may your love grow within us, that we too may produce a harvest of love, hope, and joy. Amen. Our scripture passage this morning comes from the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 10 to 13. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past and the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. cloak of sadness I need you All the evil things that shake me All the words that break me I need you All the mountains
The Song of Solomon is a startling love song between a man and a woman. It is so erotic in places that we rarely use the Song of Solomon in worship, except perhaps the passage that I just read, because quite frankly, we ministers don't want to make you blush. Nor do we want to find ourselves in hot water with members of our congregation who may find the content offensive. I mean, at one point in chapter 3, verse 4, the couple is making out in the woman's mother's bedroom. It's hard to go near that content with an open mind. So you might wonder, what is this book of erotica doing in our holy scriptures? Well, a teacher and mystic, Rabbi Akaba, settled the debate about the Song of Solomon in the first century by saying this, All the scriptures are holy, but this is the holy of holies. Well, what does he mean by that? All the scriptures are holy, but this is the holy of holies. Well, the way the Song of Solomon describes a loving mutual relationship is designed to put an end at last to the myth of Adam and Eve. Now we all know that story. We're happy to tell the tale of the way Eve tempted Adam to eat the fruit of the forbidden tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And when God found out about it, he cursed them. To the woman, he said, I will make your pangs in childbirth exceedingly great. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Yet your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And to the man, he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Men shall toil and women shall suffer. I've talked before about how God's curse upon Eve has been used for all time to justify the subjugation and abuse of women. But think on this. The woman in the Song of Solomon is neither shy nor submissive. She speaks openly about her feelings and her desires. She is not coy about her body or her personhood. Nor is the man, her love, dominant. He does not rule over her. Theirs is a mutual, faithful, respectful love, complete with the physical component of a healthy relationship. In chapter 8, verse 6, we read, It is a love as strong as death. The pages of the story are colored with images of flowers and trees and mountains and streams. I am a rose of Sharon, a lily of the valley. As an apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among men. Look, he comes leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills like a gazelle. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. What we see in the Song of Solomon is the opposite of God's curse over Adam and Eve. We see in the erotic relationship between two people a healing of the three ruptures that occur in that story of the Garden of Eden. Firstly, the relationship between man and woman is restored. In Genesis 3.16 we read, your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And it is replaced in the Song of Solomon when the woman, she says, I am my beloved's, and his desire is for me. The second rupture, the relationship between humanity and the earth is restored. In Genesis we read, Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you shall eat from it. It will produce nothing but thorns and thistles. 
in the Song of Solomon that's replaced with the earth rejoices with the lovers. And thirdly, the relationship between humanity and God is healed. The Song of Solomon describes a love as fierce as the grave, as strong as death, an unquenchable, unquestionable love. No wonder Rabbi Akiba called it the Holy of Holies. It is the human trinity, the relationship with God, the earth, and each other. For followers of Christ, that love as strong as death is the love we know because of Jesus, whose love for us transcends his death and lives on in our relationship with him. Now, it's tempting to think of this particular comparison between the story of the Garden of Eden and the Song of Solomon, which comes from commentary by Catherine Schifferdecker, a professor of Hebrew scriptures at Luther Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota. It's tempting to think of that comparison that she provides as a magical formula that solves an ancient curse. But it's far more than that. It's not the words that banish the curse. It's the fact that they make us look at God through a different lens and they give us a choice. Shall our faith be in a jealous, vengeful God who curses our bodies and poisons the ground? Who makes us suffer for his vain pursuits? Or shall our faith be in a God whose love is so fierce it transcends death itself, restores life, is abundant and generous and mutual? Do we live with a myth that divides men and women and punishes anyone who doesn't fit in a box marked man or woman? Or do we seek a deeper meaning? What would it be like to love as God loves, fiercely, abundantly, generously? And do we dominate and rule over the earth, or shall we rejoice in it? You decide. The choice is given to you. Just as Rabbi Akaba saw holiness in a poem some of his contemporaries called a drinking song that should live in the gutter, we can seek the holy in all our relationships and live as though we've been healed of the curse. Live as though we've been healed of the curse, healed by the love, grace, and mercy of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Just a reminder to check with your Chit Chat newsletter for upcoming events. This is the season of church suppers. They are all around us. And we're hosting a pork barbecue here at Bonhead United Church on August the 25th. So we hope that you'll uh, join in with that. Get your orders in by the 18th and it'll be a drive through. Pick up your meal and go and enjoy it with friends and family. There are lots of things happening in our faith community, lots of opportunities for learning coming up in the fall. So please keep in touch with our website or with the newsletter and uh, be aware of all the things that are going on, not only here at Bonthead, but also amongst all of our sister churches in the South Simcoe cluster of United Churches. Being part of a faith community is so important in this time when people are so divided. Being part of a faith community brings us together in common causes and also introduces you to the love that is felt when the spirit is alive in a community. So that we, so we hope that you will join in with us, not just online, but in person in some of our activities and programs. We are grateful for your ongoing support of our ministry here in Bondhead. Thank you for your donations. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away, for now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come. of holies, beloved God, we offer the meditations of our hearts as we utter the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My love comes outside the lines, exploring paths few could ever find Takes me into places where I've never been before And opens doors to worlds outside the line My Lord, colors outside the line Wounds to blessings, water into wine Takes me into places where I've never been before And opens doors to worlds outside the lines And we'll never walk on water if we're not prepared to drown Body and soul need a soaking from time to time And we'll never move the gravestones If we're not prepared to die And realize there are worlds outside the lines 
My soul longs to color outside the lines Tear back the curtains, sun come in and shine I want to walk beyond the boundaries Where I've never been before Throw open doors to worlds outside the lines Soaking from time to time Oh yes they do And we'll never move the grey stones If we're not prepared to die And realize There are worlds outside the line My soul longs to color outside the line Tear back the curtain Sun come in and shine I want to walk beyond the boundaries Where I've never been before Throw open doors To worlds outside the lines I want to walk beyond the boundaries Where I've never been before Throw open doors Friends, as we leave this time of worship, let thanksgiving enhance the joys you experience. Let thanksgiving transcends the pains you may suffer. Let thanksgiving sweeten the duties you must perform. Let thanksgiving underpin even the griefs you may have to endure. O oh, give thanks to our God who is so good, whose love stands firm forever. May the love of the Redeemer, the love of the Creator, and the fellowship of the Counselor be with you now and always. Amen. Have a great week, everybody. <music>